It has been said that if the Gilded Age were to be summed up in a single home, that home would have to be the Breakers. Measuring 250 feet by 150 feet and containing over 70 rooms, the four-story palatial limestone estate was a monument in its time and a summer home for Cornelius Vanderbilt and his family. Work on the Breakers began in 1893 and was completed in just over two years. Together, Cornelius Vanderbilt and architect Richard Morris Hunt envisioned a Renaissance palace, similar to those in Genoa and Turin. In the end, the home covered nearly an entire acre on the Vanderbilt's 11-acre oceanfront estate. Approaching the mansion from the street, you would come across a 30-foot wrought iron gate, flanked with columns of limestone. It was through the gate that you would see the grand and impressive scale of the home, the Beaux Arts Renaissance style exterior dazzled the eye, but was only the tip of the iceberg for what was to come inside. Every aspect of the home was beautifully done, and the floor plan was simply divine. Rooms flowed neatly and symmetrically from one to the other. You would enter the home through the carriage porch, then passing through the vestibule into the main and grand hall. The Great Hall measured 50 by 50 feet, with a ceiling height reaching 50 feet as well. There was exceptional detail, with marble plasters, oversized archways, and exceptional relief work throughout. The staircase featured low-rising marble steps, a red velvet runner, and an intricately carved wrought iron balustrade. Behind the staircase, there is a fine marble grotto fountain where the moving water is reflected onto the ceiling from the lights pointed at the grotto. Directly adjacent to this side of the Great Hall, there is a fireplace and a small hallway area. Take notice of the amazing ceiling work, the gorgeous doors, and the amazing work above them. The fireplace is also an element to be simply marveled at. It is from this area that we can enter either the library, music room, or the morning room. Let us first enter into the library. The room featured a wonderful masculine color palette with rich walnut wall paneling accented by gold leaf detail. There was a coffered ceiling which offered incredible depth and beautiful detail work. The room also housed a 16th century fireplace from a French chateau. Between the ceiling and gold paneling, green Spanish leather was embossed with gold. The room was filled with lovely books and furnished with French antiques. Next door to the library was the music room. The room's open interior was used for balls, recitals, and dances. The room featured a gilt coffered ceiling and was lined with silver and gold. The moldings in the ceiling also bared the inscriptions of French songs, lyrics, harmonies, and melodies. And around the edge of the ceiling are the names of well-known composers of the time. The fireplace was done in Campan marble, and the room was outfitted beautifully in detail work that wasn't too overwhelming, and yet still every inch was covered in a unique ornamentation. The room's woodwork and furnishings were designed by Richard van der Boyen and were implemented by the design firm Jules Allard & Sons. Mr. Vanderbilt was known to play the violin and misses the piano. This was a room which they spent a good deal of time in. It is also important to note that this room was used in the hit TV series The Gilded Age and was used as the Russell's ballroom. From the music room, we can pass through to the morning room. This was a lovely communal sitting room that faced east to admit the morning sun. Although called the morning room, it was a room that was used throughout the day. This room again was designed by the French company Jules Allard. This room's furnishings and woodwork were all designed and constructed in France and then reassembled in America. The opulent feminine motifs are extraordinary. The light, bright, and tasteful organization of color truly stands out. Now let's pass from the morning room to the loggia. The loggia was done in a beautiful Italianate style, 
with kentia palms, ferns, and exotic flowers and foliage. It was here that beautiful ocean views could be thoroughly enjoyed. One may have even set up a breakfast table here to enjoy the waterfront views and fresh air. Now let's head over to the immensely impressive billiards room. This room was inspired by ancient Rome and designed by Richard Morris Hunt. His competency with marble can be evidently noted through the great slabs of Chopino marble in this room. Around the marble lies rose alabaster arches to provide increased contrast and detail. There was also an assortment of semi-precious stones throughout the walls, forming mosaics of acorns. The Renaissance-style dark mahogany furniture further contrasts with the light and colorful marble. Now let's enter into the grandest room in the home, that being the 2400 square foot dining room. This room certainly knocks your socks off, with Roman influences and 18th century inspiration. There are 12 freestanding rose alabaster Corinthian columns supporting a colossal carved and gilt cornice. There are high levels of gilding, ornamentation, and relief work throughout the entirety of this room. The room also has a 16th century style table of carved oak and can seat up to 34 individuals. Notice the incredible large chandeliers on either side of the room. The fireplace as well can be noted from the Gilded Age TV show. This fireplace is seen in the Russell's home. The breakfast room is near the dining room and the kitchen. This room was used for informal family dining. And you can notice just how much plainer it is compared to the dining room. The paneling and furnishings were done in the Louis XV style. There is an emphasis on femininity, simplicity, and lightness. The kitchen was unlike others in its time, as it was situated on the first floor instead of the basement, and was away from the main house to prevent the possibility of fires as well as cooking smells to reach the main house. Now let's travel up the stairs. You're greeted by portraits of the family and a beautiful Italian tapestry. The ceiling has amazing works of ornamentation and carvings. And above the landing, there is a beautiful stained glass ceiling. The second floor features the family's bedrooms and fine guest rooms, as well as an upper loggia. Mr. Vanderbilt's room was done in the Louis XIV style. The bed is made of carved walnut, and so are his other furniture finishings. Mrs. Vanderbilt's room was a perfect oval shape. Her name was Alice. The room had four closets to accommodate the many times necessary to change during that time period. Gertrude was the daughter of Cornelius and Alice, and she had a very feminine, light, and beautiful room. And here is also a look at a few of the guest rooms which were available if you were staying the night. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed touring this absolute masterpiece of art, architecture, interiors, gardens, and overall design.